In the following dramatization, observe how a sister's faith brings her comfort. <laughs> when I lost my son, I lost part of myself. I tried to stay busy. But everything felt empty. darkest times, Jehovah's words brought me comfort. Not a day goes by that I don't think about Brandon. Not just memories of how it was, but even more, how wonderful it'll be to see him soon in God's new world. We deeply sympathize with the sister in the video over the loss of her son and with any in the congregation that have suffered the loss of a loved one. We deeply sympathize with the sister in the video. The sister in the video is fictitious. It's a dramatization. And here you have governing body helper William Malenfant, his symposium talk titled Imitate Women of Strong Faith, Martha, here you have William Malenfant extending official sympathies to a made-up character in a propaganda video. What does that tell you about the sincerity of this organization if they're throwing out sympathies even to fictional characters? Doesn't that call into question a little bit their sincerity towards real people, their sincerity towards real Jehovah's Witnesses. Because apparently, it's all just about reacting appropriately. William Malenfant saw this and thought, hmm, the thing to do here, on behalf of the governing body, or as a spokesperson for the governing body, is to officially extend sympathies again made up character you don't need to do that that was so weird and what can we say about the dramatization itself yet more emotionally manipulative propaganda intended to pull on the heartstrings and this particular message grates on me as someone who has lost someone as a jehovah's witness and someone who bought into this rhetoric of, you're going to see them again, Lloyd. They're not completely dead. They're still alive in Jehovah's memory. So if you want to see your dead loved one again, who's effectively being held hostage in Jehovah's memory, you need to fulfill the expectations that the religion is putting on you. You need to meet the demands of the God who is remembering your mother so that you can be reunited in the future. 
How despicable. This ultimately is leveraging grief, taking grief, taking the loss of a loved one and using it as an opportunity. Using it as an opportunity to drill home the religion's agenda to keep Jehovah's Witnesses loyal to the organization. It's long been, for me, one of the ugliest, most grotesque, most despicable elements of this religion. What does it say about a religion that needs to prey on grief in this disgusting way? We do well to imitate Martha by maintaining strong faith when we face the loss of a loved one. No, it's not easy. It's painful. But we can do it knowing full well that this life is not all there is. All true Christians must have faith in the resurrection, faith that the dead will live again and that death will be done away with in God's new world. There was a time where I had a crumb of respect for William Malenfant. He is one of the older ones at the organization, and his voice is very recognizable because I think it was William Malenfant who voiced many of the early videos and many of the, I don't know, early Bible dramas which I was listening to growing up as a child. So part of me sort of wants to like him because of that association with my childhood. But having seen him give this talk and not just relay this disgusting material that again leverages grief, exploits the grieving process, but do it so enthusiastically to the point where he relishes controlling people, controlling Jehovah's Witnesses with these false promises. I mean, hopefully he believes this. Hopefully he isn't knowingly lying. You have to, I suppose, give him the benefit of the doubt a little bit. But just this particular issue for me is a real sensitive issue and it's not just because of the loss of my mother and the fact that this sort of thinking about the resurrection kept me under the control of the organization for perhaps longer than it otherwise would have but I also see the way this thinking manifests itself in other areas. Hopefully Deanna wouldn't mind me saying that she lost her brother when he died at a young age. And it's holding a candle for his memory that I think is to a large extent keeping Deanna's parents as believing Jehovah's Witnesses. So it's not just my own experience of grief it's also seeing the way this particular teaching of the resurrection is controlling people that I care about to the point where I guess they feel they need to stay loyal as their only chance of being reunited with their son. I'm talking obviously about Deanna's parents at this point and I try to talk about them as little as possible because I know they don't like me talking about them on my videos. But to see the glee with which William Malenfant is relaying this information and doubling down on this teaching, he's old enough, I think, to understand how inappropriate this really is. Believe, if you must, William Malenfant, that you personally are going to be reunited with dead loved ones, but don't push that on others. Don't push that on others as a means of control, especially without offering any real evidence, anything tangible to support what you're saying, other than a manipulative, heart-tugging, tear-jerking dramatization that's so clearly intended to play on people's emotions in such a sensitive area.